hey guys welcome to the channel um, if you're happening on this channel for the first time welcome this is the channel where we talk about childhood memories memories as they were back in the early 60s 70s and somewhat into the 80s um, you know around the time period when I was um, growing up in my home country of Jamaica right so I was born in Jamaica and um, I moved to Canada um, in the early 90s and you know from time to time I will sit and reminisce about the times uh, you know the the good times and the not so good times growing up as a kid back in, in my home country and um, you know I thought I would create this channel just to kind of share my 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 personal memories and invite you to you know to chime in to add your comment here and there um, yeah the channel is the channel is called memory and it's really for my boys because you know they complain that they don't know much about me so I created this channel really for my for my two sons but you know it's for everyone it's for all of you who are out there watching so tonight I want to talk about a scenario or um, a situation that was you know quite common in Jamaica um, growing up depending on where you're from um, I don't know if it's if it's a stereotype or it's just a saying but there's a saying that um, Jamaican men are wild <laughs> Do you know what the term wild mean <laughs> they're players now this might just be a, some kind of stereotype I don't think all Jamaican men are like that um, but you know they said one bad apple will spoil the whole bunch right so and what I want to talk about uh, um, tonight is the fact that I grew up in a situation where I never knew my dad until I, until I was about maybe um, maybe 11 or 12 yeah I never knew my dad until I was around 11 or 12 years old now if I tell you know some of my friends and um, past schoolmates and classmates that you know that kind of stuff maybe they wouldn't believe me but it's a fact myself and my younger brother we got to know our dad quite a bit late compared to you know many kids who were fortunate enough to you know to grow up with a dad around them so let's go back a little bit so I was born in the 60s right I grew up with my grandma and my granddad um, for most of my childhood life well my grandpa passed away when I was around 10 but so my grandmother was the one who kind of um, you know raised me as um, into the man that I am today right and I sh and I think she did a darn good job in doing it growing up I can recall that you know um, the only male figure I, 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 you know, I was a part of as a, as a child was my grandfather. You know, the only male figure that was around me constantly, let's put it that way, adult male figure, uh, was my grandfather. Um, I, I still have fond memories of him. You know, I can recall um, sometime he would um, get home um, from work or wherever he might be coming from and myself and my younger brother would be rushing to sit on his lap you know those were good times the times you know he there were times when he would um there were times when he would take us down to the sugarcane patch and um you know find a nice fat sugarcane and you know cut it and peel it and and you know give it to us we're not talking about the, 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 the kind of sugar cane that is used to make sugar. We're talking about the sugar cane that we would eat, you know. 
Yeah, the juicy fat sugar canes. So I remember all, all of those years when um, he would um, sometimes he had a squeezing thing that where he that he would use to extract um, juice from the sugar cane, and um, you know that was also a fun treat um, for us. Yeah, so he was the disciplinarian I, I can recall as a kid, you know, as a little kid growing up, you know, below ten. Um, he he was the man in charge of the house so to speak and as far as i can recall you know up to that point he was the the you know the male figure that i i i i you know spend my childhood my younger my tender years with so he passed away when i was around you know when i was about 10 and i was left with my grandmother now I knew I had a dad, right? Um, and he lived in another part of Jamaica. From time to time, we would get a letter from him. You know, as a kid, I wondered, what did he look like? What, what does this man look like? You know, because up to 10, 11, um, I, have, I have never set eyes on him. You know, so... From time to time, he would, maybe once or twice a year, maybe maximum three times, he would send, um, he would send a, a letter, you know, to my, my, pair, my grandparents. Maybe that letter might have maybe a $20 note in it or something like that. You know, um, in terms of child support, we did not get um, any form of child support. I mean, like on a regular um, basis. Like I was saying, maybe once or twice a year, um, you, you would see a letter arrive in the mail. And in that letter, um, you know, back in those days when people do a lot of snail mail, because that was the norm back then. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to today when it's all texting and, you know, typing. Yeah, so we would he would maybe send a letter, maybe once or twice a year with a with a twenty dollar note in it, and you know that is all that was all I knew about this man. So at one point, you know, growing up, you know, myself and my younger brother, you know, growing up as kids, my grandmother would say to me, you know, you know, boys, a time for no 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 daddy, you know. What I mean, what she said was, it's time for you guys to know, get to know your dad. You know, but in Jamaican lingua, she would say, A time for no know no daddy. Now, I'm going to carry you down there. I'm going to get to know him. Right? Essentially, what she said, she's going to take us to his house. So, I remember this day, my grandmother decided that she was going to take the trip she was going to take us to meet our dad so we got ready in the morning early um put on i don't think we even had shoes then i can't recall if we had shoes but anyway she got us um, um she got us ready we took the bus to into the town and we went to this place this other little town just on the outskirts of um of the uh, of the capital of Manchester where where I was from where I am from I should say at that time in Jamaica the, 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 we had um, a railway we had a train running and that was around 1970 75 I think so she took us to the train station we board the train and away we went to Hanover um, we reached the int we, we traveled and we um, reached this little town um, of course my grandmother she has she you know she didn't even know where she was going <laughs> she didn't even know where she was going I mean she had a fair idea um, we knew the, the town where he was from but in terms of the location of the house, that she never knew. So she took us, so we stopped in this little town, 
in, 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 in that part of the island where my, you know, where my dad was from and she started asking questions um, randomly. Do you know this person? Do you know this man? You know, until she found someone who actually knew him and, you know, she, she was directed, um, she was, you know, pointed in the, into the direction that she should take to reach the house. So we did. And um, we walked and we walked and we walked for a little while until we um, got to this house, right? This um, place was in Hanover, Jamaica, where my dad is from, um, specifically Hopewell, and a little district called McCreary Drive, right? So you, if you're from Hopewell or McCreary Drive, yeah, that's where he's from. So we reached this house and um, uh, we knock at the gate and of course this gentleman came out and uh, my grandmother recognized him of course. Uh, it has been many many years but she recognized him and she said to him, you know, um, I brought you two sons to meet you. Now as a kid I can recall that you know, what I expected, to be honest with you, was not what I saw. I mean, what I saw was good. He had his own house, nice home, compared to where we were, to, compared to what we lived in, this little shack, this little almost cabin that we grew up in. He had his own nice home, you know. They had running water. They had electricity, you know. Um, when I when we went into the house, they had a refrigerator, they had TV. <laughs> Those things were just things that we dreamt of. But that's beside the point, you know. Um, it was very nice to actually put an, a face to the name after so many years. The most surprising thing for me though was the fact that he was married, right? He had four kids living at home. When I, when I look at the kids, you know, my half brothers and sisters, there were two girls, two boys. Um, the oldest girl look at, looked as as old as I am and then the, 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 the younger daughter or my younger half sister looked as seem as old or of the same age as my younger brother I was, I was kind of taken aback so when you think about it you know when I thought about it you know maybe I, I wasn't thinking that then but you know I, as I got older and I thought about it, I said to myself, wow, this man, I guess he was a player. Because <laughs> he, had, he had two sets of children who were practically in the same age group. But anyway, you know, after a couple of um, years, I... I, I I kind of figure out, um, you know, the birth dates of, um, you know, the other kids. I was the first. I was the first one. Um, then one of those, one of the, his daughter living there, my half sister, she was the second one. Then my younger brother, who I grew up with in Manchester, he was the third. And then the other half sister, um, she was the fourth. So this man was like, you know, juggling two women at the same time. And then, you know, the, the other two boys, they, you know, they came after. Nevertheless, um, you know, it was, it was nice meeting my dad. Um, you know, he had a lovely home. He had a nice family. Um, obviously, we were 
we were what you would call in Jamaica. We were the, we were outside children, right? I mean, you know, we were in some countries they would say bastard. Uh, we don't we don't use that term in Jamaica. We said we are we are the outside kids, right? And um, you know, it was nice knowing him and meeting him. His wife was not was quite nice. My sisters and brothers, they were they were quite nice and they were welcoming. Um, we still keep in touch, you know, up to this day. Every time I visit Jamaica, I try to to um, to to you know to go see my dad. Um, he's still alive. He's around. He's going close to ninety now. This is April of 2021. Um, he's closer to ninety right now, but he's still he's still able-bodied, you know. So that's my story never got to never got to meet my dad until i can't remember maybe i was around 11 around 11 maybe yeah i think around i was about 11. Uh, my younger brother would have been nine yeah so what's your story this was quite common in jamaica for men to have um kids all over the place a very common thing you know, for men to have kids here and there, um, you know, the, the the term baby mother is a common thing in Jamaica, right? You you know, women having three, four, five kids with, you know, five different men. Unfortunately, that's not an ideal situation, of course, but it happens. Um, in my in you know in my situation, my dad had a family and set up kids with one, his late wife, and had myself and my brother in another part of the island with my mom. So what's your story? Is this something that you can relate to? Is this something that, um, you know, that kind of resonate with you? Um, did you happen to grow up with your dad? Were you fortunate to grow up with your dad? If not, um, if you didn't, um, when did you get to meet him? When did you get to know him? I'd love to hear your story. All right, so leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, give me some feedback. Because, you know, we have a lot to talk about. If these are the kind of videos that you enjoy listening to, these kind of life stories, um, hit, hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. If you don't like these videos, you can hit the, thumb, hit the thumbs down twice. Anyway, until we talk again, there's a saying in Jamaica that if it no gossip, it near gossip. Right? But in this case, I saw it go. Alright, so take care of yourself. This is Memory Lane. Peace.